So when I first started salmon fishing many years ago, I was lucky enough to have some friends, some other charter guys that were able to help me out. Help me learn a little bit faster, shorten out that learning curve. So tonight I'm gonna to take five of those things, five of those salmon fishing hacks, I'm gonna give them to you. They've been rolling up around in my head for a while, I might as well give them out to somebody. Now you might be thinking, hey, I'm, I'm a bass angler, I'm a walleye angler, are these gonna help me out? I think everybody's gonna get something out of these. So tonight's gonna to be five. If you like what you see, hit the like button. And you may wanna subscribe because I'm gonna be doing more of these in the near future. Let's get right to it. So hack number one. I'm gonna make this number one because this is one of the earliest ones I can remember taught to me by a friend. There I was on the back of his boat, just set a downrigger. Here I am trying to find the line with my hand as I just set it out there. Works the same way when you're setting long lines, downriggers, anything like that, where you have to grab hold of the line once you attach it to something. He walks over to me and goes, hey, dummy, take your hand, run it right over the top of the rod. You got the line right there. Easy as that. Run your hand over the top. You can't help but grab it. That's it, number one. We all know that copper fishing line is great. It catches fish, no doubt about it. But boy, can it be problematic, especially when deploying it, letting it out. It has a tendency to want to bird nest on that reel. Here's a trick I came up with, seems to eliminate that problem. First thing, make sure your clicker is on, side button in the down position. I want you to now close your bail. I know, sounds weird, you're letting the line out, why am I closing it? Trust me, close your bail. Take your drag, turn it all the way back. Now, deploy your line. You can pull that thing as hard as you want, it's not going to bird nest on you. There's enough drag tension there to keep it going out. Let that out for about 100 feet, then just reverse it. Go ahead and tighten your drag back up. Bail open, and just deploy it under the clicker. Good to go. That's number two, and that's a big one. We all know that netting a fish can be as stressful as fighting a big fish. A lot going on, a lot on the line. Here's a couple tips that's going to help you out with your netting. So. I have one of the nets here from my boat. It's awful big, but uh, it is here with me. We all know that this can be the problem, the net billowing out behind the boat. If you dip that net in the water too soon and the net catches the current or the propulsion from the motors themselves, that net's gonna billow out. You have a chance that the fish is gonna get hooked on the side of the net, come loose, a lot of bad things can happen. So. You want to keep that net tight. One of the ways that I do it on my boat is I just hold on to the net like that. I go ahead and I scoop the fish. Now, this net is seven feet long. I like to be able to use the whole net sometimes. And if I'm holding it way up here, well, then I can't do that. Simple solution. First off, you're going to want to get one of these uh, cushion net floats. If you don't have one, you should have one already. If you haven't lost a net yet, you're going to someday. Ask my friend Jim. I don't know how many nets we've lost off his boat, but it always seems to happen. This will save you a bunch of money and a bunch of headache. So put that on there. Get yourself a rubber band. This is a size 32, if I remember right. Just got it right here in the shop. What I'm going to do now, you probably already figured it out. I'm going to thread that rubber band down from the other side, all the way down onto that cushion float. And that's what's nice about that cushion float is it gives you a nice big place to put that rubber band. If you want to double up the rubber band, you can do that. I found that size 32 seems to be just about the right size. Bring that net back, pull that rubber band open. Let's bring that net right in there. Nice and tight, keeps your net nice and folded up. Now I can go ahead, I can scoop a fish I can use the entirety of my net. And if you want, you can even scoot that thing back further like that to hold that net even tighter. Great little trick right here. And of course you're thinking, maybe you're thinking, well, what the heck? When that fish goes in the net, the net's all, all bound up. As soon as that fish hits that net, it's gonna pull free. You're gonna have the fish right there. Stand the net up straight up in the air, just like this. Lift the fish right into the boat. He's there, he's not going anywhere. That is tip number three. That's gonna save you some headaches and probably some angry people if you end up botching that net job. So if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you've heard me say this before. If you have a hot trolling rig that's really working for you, don't take that thing apart. I'm gonna show you a two-part trick right here, a two-part hack. It's gonna show you a way to store this, 
maybe short term, long term, off season, over season, up to you, whatever way you want it. First thing you're gonna need is a pool noodle or a piece of pipe insulation. Both work really well. I'm gonna cut off about a three inch piece of that pool noodle. Have that piece like that. Go ahead and cut a slit in one of the sides. Now you got like a C. Now you're gonna take your hot rig, whether it be flasher fly, flasher meat rig, any trolling rig. I happen to have a Dreamweaver 10 inch two face with a Dreamweaver pickled sunshine meat rig. Yeah, this is a hot rig. This is one you'd wanna to keep together. You're gonna to take that swim noodle. I like putting it on the fin side. Put that right over that like that. All you gotta do now, wrap that thing right around it. When you get to the hook, with meat rigs, be careful. You don't wanna take the bend out of that meat head. So go in the light and gently around it. Put that hook right into the pool noodle. If that was a flash or fly combo, you can do the same thing. Wrap it around, hook goes into the pool noodle or the pipe insulation. That is nicely kept, nicely put away, or nicely tidily, tidily kept, <laughs> one of those things. Now that you have that thing nicely wrapped up, ready to go to bed, take yourself a one gallon freezer bag. Freezer bag works better, uh, a freezer bag works better just because it's a little thicker and the hooks have a harder time going through. I do this all the time. I do this for my off-season storage. I do this for my on-season storage. The biggest thing is to remember Remember to let that dry out. If you've been running it all day, put it up on your dash in the sun, wherever it's gonna dry out for a couple of hours. Once it's nice and dry so you don't get mold, pop that thing right in that freezer bag. This freezer bag, the one gallon size, will fit the eight inch, the 10 inch, even the big 11 inch Beck holds and paddles from Dreamweaver. It'll fit all those. Close that thing up. Now you can wrap that up whatever way you want, get the air out. Put that thing in a tote for off season, put it in a tackle box, wherever you want to put it. It'll keep that thing from getting tangled up and that'll keep you from having many, many more headaches. That's number four. You ever get done fishing and you still smell like the fish? We've all been there. Husbands, wives, spouses, girlfriends, boyfriends, they don't tend to like that sort of thing. Here's a trick I learned from my friend Brian. I'm not gonna give you the backstory on how he came up with this because it's a little disgusting. But trust me, this works. Wash your hands normal like I just did. Grab yourself some of that right there. Original Barbasol. Stuff's been around since World War II. Shake it up. Apply on your hands. Little will do. Rub it in just like soap. Once you rub it in for 10 to 20 seconds, wash it off like you were never on the water. Stuff, stuff works great. Got a nice smell to it and you no longer smell like fish. Hey, guys, that's number five. Uh, if you like this, please take a second, hit the like button. I really would appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, you're going to get a chance to see more videos like this in the future. And you get a chance to watch all of the, uh, the history in the catalog that we have. We love doing videos to try to help people out on the Great Lakes, the big water, wherever you might be chasing salmon and trout. Until next time, have a great one.